Welcome back to Autodesk Maya 2017. In this tutorial we're going to examine uh, the power of duplication in Maya and what it's all about. So I have a couple of objects here. Uh, this one is called gear and this one's called fan that I modeled here in Maya. And um, I wanted you to, first off, I'm going to hide this one by selecting it and hitting Control H. And then uh, I'm going to select this one and sort of focus it on it and we're going to examine what's going on here. So we are in this area that has uh, a grid which is centered and uh, I just want you to know that and the pivot is centered there. So what I want to do is just talk about duplication with the hotkeys and then go into some of its attributes and explore some other options. So the first thing to duplicate something you can simply hit control D uh, and then you essentially have a duplicate. You'll see here it says gear 1 and I can move this out and I have another gear. And then I could hit uh, Control D again and then move it out and I have gear one, gear two, and gear three. Each one is a unique unit. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and delete that one. Another way to duplicate is by hitting um, Shift D. And Shift D, what it'll do is uh, it'll make a duplicate copy. And then once you release, if you hit Shift D again, it will repeat that exact measurement in terms of the translation that you did or rotation or whatever, uh, even scale. It will repeat that action. So you can see here I have a bunch of them at the same distance from the first one as I moved it out just by hitting Shift D. And again, they're automatically being numbered uh, just with a 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. So let me go ahead and um, select these and just delete them again. And I'm going to go through some of the options here. Uh, we are at the center of the grid. I'm going to remove the grid just so it's a little easier to see. And uh, what I want you to do is, if you're uh, if you're following along, have your own object selected, go to the Edit menu and go down to Duplicate Special. And you can see right above it is a duplicate command with the hotkeys Control D. But in the Duplicate Special, we have Control Shift D, and uh, we also have here Duplicate with Transform Shift D. That's the hotkey I was using before to move it translate it. But I'm going to go to the options of the duplicate special by clicking this little square icon here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the edit menu and reset settings. And uh, just so that we are basically working along the same sort of uh, uh, workspace here. And so I have this object selected and what I can do is I can either make it a copy or an instance. I'm going to explain the difference between these two in just a sec, but I, I just want you to know there's two types you can uh, basically make an object. If you're uh, if you're familiar with a program like Adobe Flash, instancing should be uh, quite familiar. You can uh, group it under a parent or world, and uh, that basically depends on you know uh, if you want it to be the world view, then it's equal. If you want it to be a parent to this object you can have it group that or you can put it in its own new group and then uh, you can change the values here right here uh, which represent X Y and Z in translate rotate and scale and then determine the number of copies so let's look a, take a look at some of this options here what I'm gonna first do is just I'm gonna translate on the X and I'm gonna type in maybe a value 5 uh, click out and then um, maybe I'll rotate on the Y with uh, 5 also and I'm not going to mess with the scale um, and then I'll drag this number up to 8 copies and then I'm just going to click the apply and you'll start to see what happens here so what has happened is we start to rotate right on the uh, Y so you can see it's starting to curve around here and you can start to see that it is translating exactly 5 degrees in the X so each one of these is moving 5, 5, 5, 5 and you'll notice because I had copy, these are individual pieces of geometry. So if I go to the display menu and choose shapes, you will see that the shape node, uh, I'm sorry, the transform and the shape node have uh, unique names. So you can see here it says shape one, I'm sorry, gear one shape and then gear two shape, meaning that they're different, they're completely different. So I can model them differently and everything. So what is the difference between that and an instance? I'm going to um, undo this by hitting Control-Z a couple times. There we go. And what I'm going to share with you is the difference in the instance. So let's check instance here. 
kind of want to uh, magnify that rotation a little bit. So I'm going to type in maybe 20 degrees here um, and maybe increase the translate to 10. And then I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Now what this is doing, you can see it's starting to spin out and almost like an arch here. Uh, what this is doing is this is now uh, the same in terms of its shape node, not the transform node. So if you notice, each of these is named differently. We have gear one, gear two, gear three, and so forth. But let's open them up. I have, again, under display shapes checked. You need to have that to see this. But if you open up this one and open up this one, you'll see each one is named gear shape, gear shape, gear shape, because they are all uh, basically uh, have the exact same shape node in here. So what does this mean? Well, it means whatever I change on this one will be updated on these. For example, if I right click, go to face mode, and I'm gonna uh, just drag a marquee selection across this rim here, um, or I don't want the whole thing selected. Maybe I'll click on this one and double click so I get the edge loop there. Um, and then I'm gonna hit the hot key of control E for the extrude tool. And let me move this out of the way. Here's the extrude options. The thing I'm going to uncheck here is right here at the bottom, I'm going to click in here and make sure keep faces uh, together is turned off. And then I'm going to click on this blue cube and then click on the center cube to scale in a little bit. And you can see each face is now separated. I'm going to grab the red cube, click on that to drag in on the X axis to kind of squish them in a little bit. Uh, then I'm going to hit G, which will repeat any action. It's that magical hotkey. And now I can extrude out by grabbing the arrow here. And you can see here, I'm updating here, but what's happening over here on the left? Whoa, what's happening with all of them? They're all being updated, which is pretty freaking awesome if you look at it. Um, I mean, this is very powerful. I can click on the blue cube, scale in, and you can see that it's dynamically adjusting on the fly. And that's what instancing allows you to do. The other thing that instancing allows you to do is it basically saves on memory. So. Uh, these are still in render time. These still will take the same amount of time uh, if these were single objects versus uh, instancing objects. But in terms of rendering in the window here, uh, it saves on memory because each of these is an instance of that original shape node. The gear shape is in each of these, which you can see here. So uh, just a little tidbit about duplicating with instancing. Uh, it's very powerful and you get the idea of the translate and the rotate if you wanted to scale that just scales it up in the X Y and Z or you can uniformly scale it if you want to do that um, and then we have the number of copies so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and select all these and I'm gonna delete them just by hitting the backspace key and then what I'm gonna do is click on this fan here I still have this uh, group here I'm gonna delete that too click on this fan here and hit the uh, shift H well, to return this fan here, and I'm going to click on the grid icon to show that we're not in the center here. Okay, so say you want to make a perfect circle of objects. Well, this is very interesting. If you have an object and you set it out to a certain uh, angle, uh, what you can do is you can group it. So I'm going to hit the hotkey of Control G to group it, and what that'll do is it'll move the transform to the center here. If you notice, if I open this up and metal mouse out to drag it outside the group and click on it, you can see that it is no longer, the transform is over here, not in the center. But as soon as I drag this group, you know, into this group here, when I select the group, its transform is now in the middle. This is very important. So what does this allow you to do? Well, let's make sure the group is selected. And I could rename this, I could call this fan group or something like that. Maybe I'll name that uh, fan group. So I can select this group and then I can determine how I want to change this. Well, I don't want to translate it. I just want to rotate. So I'm going to hit a zero value there. Um, I'm going to rotate it. Uh, 20 is probably going to be good. And then I want to rotate like 17 copies of this and then click apply. And just like that, now I have this uh, sort of fan quality, almost like a jet engine or something like that, which would be pretty cool. Let me go ahead and close out this window here and show you some options. Again, these are instances. So again, I could, if I wanted to, select a, a face of this one, which is over here. Select a face, click on the face, 
And if I wanted to, I could move it and each of these would update, as you can see here on the fly. Um, if I wanted to select all the faces in that in that, that whole thing, if I just drag a marquee over the whole thing and then move out, the whole unit will kind of move out as if boats are kind of moving out from the center and I can also bring them in, which is kind of cool. Um, then I could, if I wanted to, I could rotate uh, on the fly here too. Um, in terms of rotation though, if I rotate like this, you can see it's kind of spinning around that little axis. If I want to spin the whole group around, what I can do is shift select all of these and then rotate on the Y and have some interesting effects too. So you can see here, uh, let me undo that last one, rotate on the Y and you could animate kind of like a turbine or something for a jet engine which would be kind of cool. So lots of different possibilities there as you can see. The other thing I wanted you to know about what's unique about these things is that even though each of these, like if I move this object uh, in face mode, again, you want to select all the faces on that object um, in this group here. You select it again, there we go. And then if I move it out, they all kind of move out as one. Um, if you don't do that, if you're in com out of component mode by hitting F8, uh, which doesn't seem to want to do, let's try that again, F8, there we go. You'll see that uh, if we select one of these now and move out, you're just moving out the one individual image. So it doesn't work in terms of moving it out. Each of these, in fact, can be moved independently if you grab the transform node. So uh, this is what's the interesting thing about duplication is that I could, for example, I could select, um, let's see, every other one, like two, and then I could click on the control key and click on some of these like every other one say like that and then I could uh, move them up say and you can see here how every other one I didn't go all the way around but you get the idea here and then I can still click on you know one of these and modify it and the one group would would come together and I could shift select all of them and also rotate along the uh, y-axis which would cause some issues of uh, double transformation there, as you can see, because I move these up and their axis is different from the other. So I'm going to undo so that they're back here like this. So now I could select all these groups and now rotate and all kind of rotate around the same axis, which is kind of fun. You can also click on the Y axis and kind of just spinning around and they go in and out and out like that, which is kind of fun. So you can have lots of fun with animation with these um, duplicate special. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial on duplicating in Maya. Uh, have fun creating instancing and duplication. Again, hotkey is Control D or Shift D to just simply duplicate or duplicate with transform. And then all your uh, duplicate special options are in the edit menu. Go down to duplicate special. Make sure you click on that little box and then here they are. Until next time, see you soon in Autodesk Maya. Cheers.